where is the audience? Who is our audience? How do we reach our audiences? Does the audience change because of new media? Does the audience change because of this vast offer that is out there? Uh, there are so many ways they can use their free time that maybe cinema is not necessarily their face cho first choice. And that applies, of course, to European cinema as well. That applies to cinema in general, but also to European cinema. We were discussing today ways of reaching modern audiences, how to win that battle. That's a good question. Nobody knows the answer. We're just experimenting. We went recently through digital revolution, digitalization of cinema, and now we can see the side effects and the major effects that it caused. Basically, it's very hard nowadays to find space for a certain type of small, ambitious, bold art films from Europe or from, from, from all the world. Uh, in cinema. Cinemas prefer to play it safe. Cinemas prefer, prefer to have Skyfall and then we ask ourselves, okay, do we look for new spaces to play films? Do we look for museum spaces? Do we create new um, spaces to, uh, you know, screen films? Or do we simply rely on new digital ways of reaching people, say, VOD? I am looking for films that can be turned into events, films that are uh, appealing to press, films that, are, uh, that I fall in love with, and films that uh, get rave reviews and then you know there's this must-see factor around them. And that, in terms of art films, that happened with uh, Separation, by Ashgar Farhadi that happened with Amour by uh, Haneke. But usually you have uh, two or three films like this a year. So the question is what do you do with the rest of your time? We experimented recently uh, with a day and date, uh, you know, uh, introduction of the film in theater and uh, through VOD platform. It was called, the film is called Viramundo and we are looking at the very first result that came in because we released it last Friday and I can say that much more people uh, prefer to see the film still in the old, good old traditional cinema than online through transactional VOD. It's much harder. Uh, it definitely increased and improved the circulation of national language cinema, of Polish cinema in Poland, and um, increased the uh, presence of blockbusters. You have the multiple, multi it multiplied the, uh, the number of prints that the films are being introduced with. So, but when it comes to smaller European films, uh, we have more releases every week, but at the same time we have less play dates, we have less slots reserved for these films. So I would say it's much more competitive nowadays when it comes to a film. And probably only the companies that are balancing their lineups that have both films, commercial films and uh, more ambitious productions, they can somehow survive or struggle. It's very hard to rely only on hardcore, ambitious, bold, you know, uh, independent cinema. Well, you can do it if you have a very small company composed of two people, that's it. But otherwise, if you want to have your, like a normal large scale business, you know, if you want to run a normal scale company of five, seven, ten people, then you have to look for more commercial films as well. So basically all the panelists, my colleagues, distributors and sales agents, we agreed that it's a great time for experimentation, for checking out whether something works. And we're like trying to do something called secret cinema. This is the British idea, how to offer to the audiences a very immersive experience, something more than a flat screen and projected image on a flat screen. And so, you know, a lot of people are thinking, what else we could offer to the audiences so they could have a social experience, so they could mingle with each other, communicate. And that's, you know, something that a lot of distributors are working on.